I'm Donna Gilmore. I'm the founder of the <laughs> thank you, uh, San Onofre Safety.org website. A few months before Fukushima, I was sitting in my backyard in San Clemente and oblivious to all what was going on. And I read in the local paper that employees at the plant were being uh, fired for reporting safety problems. Uh, so after investigating, I found out not only was that happening, but we don't have a lot of time, so I'll cut to this. San Onofre has more safety complaints from employees to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission than any other plant in the entire nation. You can see the red lines uh, over, yeah. over there is San, San Onofre, and that's all the rest of them, you know, the blue lines for the rest of the plants. And they also have the highest rate of retaliating against employees that report safety problems. Okay. And this data comes directly from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission website. Uh, one of the whistleblowers showed me how to read their what they call safety allegation statistics. And this is like a six year period and it continues today. Um, and then there, there's a chart for their steam generators that looks pretty similar to this. They have like the worst steam generators too. So, but that's a whole nother, we need another day for that. Um, and now we're relying on Southern California Edison to manage the tons of waste that's sitting at the plant. After the plant closed, um, I started researching the waste. And what I found out is, I didn't think I could be shocked anymore. San Onofre chose to use a fuel that is over twice as radioactive and unstable in storage and unpredictable. It takes going to take at least 15 years to cool in the what they call spent fuel pools before it's cool enough to move to a dry container. However, I also learned that the even the NRC will not approve a, a container, a dry cask for this for this what they call high burn up fuel because it burns burns longer in the reactor. Uh, because they don't trust it will last l longer than 20 years in the dry container. Uh, this stuff is um, uh, this high burn-up fuel. It's a fuel that, that can burn longer in the reactor, which makes Edison more money but makes us less safe. Um, it's breaking the protective cladding around the uranium pellets. It's cracking, and if that cracks, it can release radiation into the environment. And if any oxygen gets in those dry containers, gets in the dry containers, um, we can have a hydrogen explosion in, in a dry cask down there. And we've got, uh, you know, how, how many more times of uh, than Chernobyl? times the amount of radiation that we, we stored 19 times the amount of radiation that was released in Chernobyl accident right here in San Onofre. Yeah. And, and there's no, so people are wanting to get this stuff out of here. Well, the, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission will not approve a transportation container because the protective cladding over the uranium is becoming fragile and it might shatter if they move the stuff. So we're kind of stuck. So, so what is the nuclear industry? What is San Onofre? What is the NRC doing about this? Uh, not much. They're not doing anything that's going to help. Um, so I, I uh, collaborated with a nuclear physicist and we put together a, a paper on the, on the problem in more details and we have some uh, suggestions uh, for what we can do um, to improve this. But from what I've learned um, in all my research is, is we're in an environment where profit is, is prioritize over safety, and this you know, goes all the way up. Uh, so unless we get citizen involvement to, to, to flip that, so we have safety over um, profits, um, you know, we're, we're gonna be the next Fukushima, even though those reactors are not running. It, it's that serious. It's a question? Yes. You mentioned this high burn-up fuel. High burn-up fuel. 
Uh, well, MOX can be high burnout. MOX, MOX is very dangerous also. They're not using that at the plant. Uh, a high burnout fuel is uh, low enriched uranium. They take the uranium and they add up to 5% of uranium-235 to it. And by doing that, uh, you can use a fuel uh, longer, you can burn it longer in the reactor before you have to take it out and treat it as spent fuel. MOX has plutonium in it. Okay, so that's, that's the difference. That's extremely dangerous. Uh, no, but it eventually will create plutonium at some point. So uh, now, uh, yeah, it, there's, a uh, there's a technical term they use. Uh, the, the NRC currently defines high burn up is fuel that um, has, um, uh, let me see, has produced, what is it, over, 40, over 45 gigawatt days per metric ton of uranium. Anyway, so it's a, you know, kind of a convoluted measurement. But in actuality, the Department of Energy, Energy has reports that fuel that has burn up as low as 30 gigawatt days um, is showing the same signs. And the fuel at San Onofre, it's all over, it's all pretty much over 40 um, is what they have there, except for this stuff that uh, just recently came out of Unit 2 that they had loaded in anticipating a restarting and they didn't get to do that. Question? Are the things that you're saying summarized somewhere else? Yes, you can actually, I've kind of got it set up so you can either read the cliff notes or the long version, okay? So if you go to the home page, SantaNoFreeSafety.org, um, it, it'll give you the highlights of not only this issue, but a, a number of other really important issues. And then you can, and I actually have a, a nuclear waste page that goes into this and a number of other things. That, you, know, they're, you know, it's kind of late and I don't want to um, wear people out, but this is, this is a critical issue and I've, found myself in an odd situation that I'm actually educating um, nuclear engineers on this. The, um, they were misled, let's say, years ago that the only difference between high burn-up fuel and lower burn-up fuel was it just has to cool longer before you can put it in dry cask. And that's, and that's not true. And, and they knew it wasn't, wasn't true, but for some reason, um, they, di they didn't understand that. So, so every document on my website has links to either an NRC document or a government or scientific report backing up all the facts that I, ha that I have. And I've got copies of the NRC document where they're not approving more than 20 years of dry storage, where they're not approving, approving transportation studies and, and charts. There's a chart showing the higher the burn up, the more hydrides get created, and the more hydrides, you know, the higher the risk of a, of a hydrogen explosion, like you saw at Fukushima. Um, and if any oxygen gets to that, and the, those, ca those canisters that they put it in, they're made out of stainless steel, and the, the, uh, there's a, a worker at the plant that used to run the shop that manufactured those, and he says this marine environment, well, you know what it does to metals, we live here, um, it, you know, is affecting the metals and affecting the, the welds. Um, so if, if that containment is breached in the, in the canister and, and the, the cladding has failed, uh, then, then those casts will just explode right there, and that radiation will go everywhere. So, so it's very important to get involved in, question? So you all know about Dr. Helen Caldicott? Yes, I know about Helen Caldicott. She's the on, on high burn up? On nuclear reactors. Oh, on nuclear reactors, yeah, yeah, all, all yeah. The that have well. Okay. So yeah, yeah, she's, Great. yeah, she is. And, and it's important to share this information and to learn more. Um, the, re the report that was uh, uh, done with uh, Dr. Marvin Reznikoff, um, that's been presented to the head of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, um, uh, to some set, um, Senate staff, so, so we've got some different action items going and some recommendations. The industry, their idea of solving the problems is let's stick some high burn-up fuel 
in a canister that was not even approved for it, and we'll just watch and prove to you that everything's hunky-dory, and that's their plan. That's the plan. Since they have no other plan for long-term Well, and, and the, the other problem, the other, the other problem is uh, they don't even consider options if it's going to cost them too much money. So that's the other thing that has to change, but that's not going to change without, you know, pressure from, uh, from, from, from people here and other places. Uh, I've also found that the people that are in power that can do something about this are totally ignorant of this issue. Um, and, you know, I, I spoke to uh, uh, the CPUC Commissioner Florio. He'd never heard the, the term high burn up. Uh, PG&E tried to lie about it um, um, and, and got caught. I read their document and, and uh, and now, and now San Onofre is trying to approve a new model dry cast that's even going to be more dangerous to put it in. So we can't trust them to do it right. We can't trust the NRC to watch it. So we need something similar to what we did to get San Onofre shut down. Now we had a, to get San Onofre shut down, we had Friends of the Earth involved. They had a generous donation from uh, somebody in, uh, in Laguna Beach, so we, we need to thank whoever that was in Laguna Beach for making the difference, because if there was no money to pay for those lawyers to, to, to take legal action against our own government, that, that plant may have, uh, may have restarted. So, it, so it, took a t it took a team effort, and, and, and that, uh, you know, and that too, and then the, we, we went to local city councils, we educated city councils, we educated state level, we educated Barbara Boxer, um, and, um, and so through, through this process, putting it all together, um, it, you know, the, the plant was shut down. But without, without the money for the lawyers, you know, it wouldn't have happened. I, I recommend that you go to the website and get educated if there is at a point, uh, and if you, if you follow it, I, I don't do many postings on it because I know everybody's busy and they have a lot of other things to do. So, so if there's something significant event, it'll get posted there. And, and Gary also has a, um, a list where he'll send things out for, uh, for events with his San Clemente Green. So you can sign up and get those. It's, it's not a whole lot of emails, it's just significant things. But it's you know, you, you care enough to show up. How many of you knew that San Onofre had the worst safety record Quite a few. Okay, so so that's good. So anyway, so we're counting on them, and they're not going to do it. So it's up to us. We've got another big battle here, and I'm going to be optimistic. It's um, winnable, but at the same night time, I'm not going to remodel my house yet. So. Oh yeah, go on, click the subscribe button. Uh, we need to get subscribe and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us guys and it's, it's really bad.